my Adore, my 64, my Commodore 64. Hi there, and welcome to a Let's Type episode from the Commodore 64 Appreciation Society. This is a series where I reach back into the past and type out a program from an old computer magazine, and then when I finish typing it in, I play it. Today we're headed back to October 1983, a time when Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney were topping the charts with Say Say Say, and James Bond was breaking box office records with Never Say Never Again. In the tech world, Microsoft had just announced Windows 1.0 and the domain name system had just been created. It was a lively time. Meanwhile, 12 year old me was spending hours on my VIC-20 playing games like Cosmic Cruncher and Omega Race and typing in programs for magazines like Compute. I love typing in games. Debugging was half the fun and I always picked up new tricks I could sneak into my own code. And the best part? Ending up with a brand new game for my collection. Today's game is exactly the sort of thing I would have been all over back then. It's called Dragon Master, and your quest is to save a princess by defeating a horde of dragons. That's a premise I can absolutely get behind, and the graphics don't look half bad either. I'm looking forward to diving in. But before I start hammering away at the keyboard, a quick reminder, if you enjoy these type of videos, there are plenty more. I've linked a playlist in the description so you can check them out. All right, let's get started. Dragon Master was written by David Burdan for the VIC-20 and later ported to the 64 by Chris Metcalf over at Compute. In the game, we play as three brave knights returning home, only to find that the countryside has been completely overrun by dragons. The evil wizard behind it has also trapped a beautiful princess inside their castle. One by one, our knights set out to slay the dragons and rescue her. That's quite the backstory. I'm already hooked. Who's the princess? What's the wizard's deal? Where did all these dragons come from? And what's going on with the three knights? Are they friends? Rivals? Did they at least carpool here together? And of course, only one of them can win the princess's heart. Which probably makes for a very awkward conversation later. It's all wonderfully overcomplicated and I'm absolutely here for it. The screenshots of Dragon Master look great. The dragons are clearly defined and you can make out the castle right in the center of the screen. Interestingly, the original VIC-20 version is actually more colorful than the 64 port, but its play area is much smaller. This makes sense though, the 64 supports a text display that's nearly twice the size of the VIC's. Also, I'm glad Chris Metcalf decided to make full use of that extra space in this version. It really feels like he tried to preserve the original spirit of the game while also taking advantage of the 64's higher resolution. And as a 64 fan, I like that. We've seen a few games go the other way, where the playfield stays the same size as on the Vic. Dots from the September 83 issue is a good example of this. I always thought it looks odd to have the playing area crammed to the side, but to be fair, I can appreciate the effort it takes to completely alter a game to fit a different resolution. This is a pretty small program and it just takes up a couple of pages in the magazine. As I'm getting close to the end of typing it in, I thought it would be fun to take a look at what else was happening in this issue of Compute. Each issue is like a little time capsule of computing history, and flipping through them always reminds me of just how far we've come. This month's feature article is about a brand new idea called telegaming, where people connect online, usually through a service like CompuServe, to play games together. They mention titles like Space Wars and Deck Wars, both interactive text games where you hunt down enemy ships and each other. By today's standard, they're incredibly simple, but back then, they were addictive. People were buying modems just so they could join in. I remember a few years later doing the same thing, logging onto BBSs every day so I wouldn't miss my turn. Also in this issue, an article debating violence in video games. On one side, you had people convinced games were going to turn kids into homicidal maniacs. On the other, those who said games were just reflecting society, no worse than TV or comic books. And here we are, 40 some years later, still having the same debate. Though at least now we have actual data showing games don't cause violence. There's also a fun piece on a robot called the Hero One, which could be programmed to speak, move around, and wave its arm. It didn't have much practical use. 
It was basically a speech synthesizer on wheels. But at the time, it felt incredibly futuristic. I desperately wanted one, especially after seeing Rocky IV. Eventually, I did get a robot. Though 12-year-old me might be disappointed to learn it was just a vacuum cleaner. All right, after finishing up with a long string of data statements for the character graphics, we're done. Now we can just save it. Dragon Master is 18 blocks on disk, which is about 4.5k. It never ceases to amaze me how much can be done with so little memory. I always like taking a look at the program after it's all typed in. This is 4.5k, folks. Okay, let's run it and see what happens. Nice intro screen. There are a couple of minor typos, which I'll fix when I get into the code. Let's start with easy and see what happens. Waiting. Huh. Oh, wow. It crashed. That certainly hasn't happened very often. Looks like I'm going to have to do a full code review before I even get to try the game. Before I started looking at the code, I checked to see if there were any corrections in later issues of compute. There weren't. A code review basically involves going through each line of code and comparing it with what's in the magazine. No matter how careful I am when typing, a few errors are inevitable. And going through the code like this takes some time, but it's generally the best way to find all the problems. Most of the times the errors are simple, such as line 1970 here, where I entered a square bracket instead of a colon. Simple fix. Other times they are much more consequential. In line 1590 here, I missed an important part of the poke statement. The term in the bracket should have said x minus 48 instead of just 48. That's a pretty major problem, and if I had to guess, I'd say that this is actually what caused the crash. It is in the section of code responsible for setting up the game and placing the dragons. Okay, so the code review is finished, and I feel confident that I have a working game now. <laughs> oh, come on. I still missed adding a second hyphen beside F3. I'll take care of that in a little bit. Okay, let's pick easy to start. And nice. Oh, I like that little sound that plays when the drawbridge closes. Check out these dragons, they look so cool. And I really like the phantom dragon guarding the castle. The instructions say you can only get that guy at the very end. Oh, okay, you can't go near the head. Okay, so you can go above the head, just not right in front of it. And cool, some of the dragons are randomly changing directions too. Well, that was a dismal failure, but in my defense, I was just testing things out. Let's try it again on easy. Easy turns out to be, well, really easy. The wizard is the sad faced looking guy that's chasing me around, but he doesn't get too close and even when he does, I don't actually die. All I have to really do is avoid the dragon's heads. My guess is that this is what makes it easy. And victory! The gallant knight saves the day! Hey, the ending is great! Okay, let's crank up the difficulty to the highest level and see what that's like. <laughs> Holy crap! This wizard isn't playing around. 
Okay, the hardest level is basically impossible. Keeping ahead of the wizard is possible, but the joystick button doesn't always work when you press it. There's a delay when the computer is doing other things, like moving the dragons and the wizard. So you can position yourself perfectly, but still get nabbed. Let's try very hard instead. Okay, this is a little easier. Man, is that wizard relentless. It's the same problem though. I could see completing this one with enough reps, but to be honest, I find it a bit unfair because of the issue with the button, and winning will require a lot of luck. I'm going to try standard mode. Hopefully it's better balanced. Okay, now we're talking. The wizard is still relentless, but I get just a bit of extra space, and that makes all the difference. The trick is to keep moving so he can't catch you. <laughs> I love how new dragons keep showing up. That wizard is a real jerk. Okay, and now just the phantom. Oh, after I get that new guy. <laughs> that explosion is so cool. And another princess saved. So, Dragon Master on standard is definitely the way to go. It's forgiving enough that the joystick delay doesn't really get in the way, but it still keeps you on your toes. There's probably a more efficient way to code that delay out entirely, and rewriting it in assembly or machine language would almost certainly solve the problem too. It's just a bit too slow in BASIC, which is fair. BASIC was never known for its blistering speed. But that's not a knock on the game itself, far from it. It's genuinely fun, and clearing out that dragon infestation feels really satisfying. I didn't type this one in as a kid, but 12 year old me absolutely would have loved it. So kudos to David Burdan for creating a great little game, and to the compute team for another solid Commodore 64 conversion. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. And if you have any memories of Dragon Master, this issue of Compute, or anything else you'd like to share, drop them in the comments. Hope to see you again.